joined in by Stefan Dujaric, who's the spokesperson for the UN Secretary General, Mr. Antonio Guterres. Many thanks to you, Stefan, for joining in. I know Mr. Guterres extensively spoke about how he hopes India will be able to navigate the polarized geopolitical climate. How does he weigh in on the New Delhi leaders' declaration? Well, I mean, I think the fact that there was a declaration is already a great victory. There's been a lot of chatter, as you know, that there would not be one. And I think the fact that there was a unanimous uh, declaration is a, a reflection of the strong leadership of the G20 presidency and the willingness of all members of the G20 to compromise. And I think we need to have effective leadership. You need compromise. We can't solve any of the challenges we have in the world today without compromise. Very rightly said. And that is why I now come to the theme of G20, which is about inclusivity. Uh, Vasudev Kutumbakam, that the world is one. Mm -hmm. When we talk about inclusivity, how uh, does the UN look at, the, uh, look at the inclusion of the African Union now that India is also playing the role of bridging that ga gap between North and the Global South? also not to forget the African continent. Yes, in fact, we've. Uh, I think India uh, is a bridge builder, both politically and in a sense geographically. Uh, it is very important that the African Union was included in the G20. It sort of pumps up the voice of the global south. Uh, you know, for the last week or so, the Secretary General has been on a tour of summits. He was at the ASEAN summit, uh, at the G20. Previously, he attended the G7 in Japan. After, he's going to the G77 in Cuba. Uh, and this is all in preparation for the biggest G of all, which is, in fact, the General Assembly, which is the most inclusive grouping. It brings together all 193 member states in an effort to solve and to move forward on climate change, on global health, on all of these challenges that we're facing today. Stefan, at a time when it, it's being talked about that multilateralism is in a state of crisis, what do you make of uh, Prime Minister, the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's role in terms of uh, reviving the G20 as well? And, uh, He's also managed a coup of sorts by bringing uh, all the member nations on the same play, uh, page with this declaration. Yes, I mean, I think the G20 and the fact there was consensus is extremely important. But what we need to fight against is fragmentation in a multipolar world. We are in a multipolar world, and that in itself is not bad. But what we need to fight against is fragmentation. And the way we do that is to by bringing people together. So you bring people through the, G, the G20 and the other groups, and ultimately, as I said, you bring people together in the General Assembly. And that is something we, we, we need more intense multilateralism, we need more reinvigorated multilateralism, and we need leaders to all recommit to multilateralism, because it is the only way we're going to face the challenges that we have today. My next question is about climate action, and it's ironical that we are talking about it at a time when Morocco has seen the biggest catastrophe mm -hmm. in recent days. Uh, are you happy with the way G20 has been uh, making an effort to address the issue of climate action and climate change? Well, you know, the group of 20, which is the largest 20 economies in the world, represent 80% of the carbon emissions in the world. What we want to see from the G20 and from all large emitters is more action, uh, more ambition, uh, because we are at a point of climate chaos and the only way we are going to move forward and survive is by sh leaders showing political courage and giving us more action on climate. How does the UN um, assess the, uh, the absence of uh, the Chinese President Xi Jinping and the absence of the Russian President Vladimir Putin? Well, I mean, listen, we, we are not the host, so it's not for us to comment, but I think it is important to remember it is we shouldn't personalize things, right? It's not the responsibilities of countries it is not a personal one. It is one of, of a sovereign country. So in a sense, there, there were no empty seats at the G20. China was there and Russia was there as well. And I think that's something we all need to remember. Very well said. Many thanks to you, Stefan, for sharing your My precious pleasure. inputs with us. It was a pleasure to have you on CNN News 18. Thank you so much.